Hello, beautiful human. Before we talk to Meg Donnelly, I want to talk to you about sleep and the mattress that I've been sleeping on for over a year. When it's your time to get a mattress, try at the Vibersonic by Beyond Sleep. This thing has six speakers built into it, so you're going to play your video games different, you're going to watch movies differently, listen to podcasts like this one differently, your music is going to feel different, you're going to meditate differently, I'm telling you. Anything you love to listen to will sound better and feel different with the Vibersonic. And it's going to allow you to do more with your mattress. This thing has memory foam, so when you get hot, it gets cold. Plus, the adjustable base aligns for your spine. You can sleep in zero gravity, Dan. That's crazy. This thing is no joke. So when it's your time to buy a new mattress, do more with your mattress. Do more when you sleep with the Vibersonic. Try it out. Link below or grab the code on the screen. Hi, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Daniel. Yep. Welcome to the studio for the first time ever. Meg Donnelly. Yo. Mm. Thank you for mm. having me. Yeah, you uh, you got a lot of stuff going on in your life. Yes, definitely. Um, but yeah, also, thank you. I watched your show a lot, like on YouTube. It's like my, like something that I watch like daily. So um, <laughs> it's really cool that I'm here. So I'm so Thank you for having me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't be sorry. I hope we meet your expectations. Yes, definitely. This that, is so cool. I mean, that is something, right? Like that you think about. And and, mm. and there is like and you definitely experience this on a totally different level. Mm. But I mean, tens of millions of kids have watched this series of movies mm. that have like these beautiful messages at its core mm. and these really special songs. It gives camp from time to time, <laughs> but it also gives me exactly what I was fulfilled by it with High School camp. Musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the responsibility like that comes along with portraying a character that, I mean, according to Nielsen in every sort of ratings metric, this is the biggest series of movies for children by far. Wow. You didn't know that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, no, she's, yeah, she's, I mean, you're at number four right now, Mazel Tov, by the way. Wow, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. it's so surreal. Um, yeah, the, you know, I don't know. I think when I started with Milo, we were, like, 16, and I had just turned 16, and I don't think I, I it was always a dream of mine to be on Disney and Disney Channel and to do musicals, because I'm a huge theater kid, and just being on set, it was just so surreal. And I was just trying um, to stay grounded because I was so excited. And I think as it progressed, I kind of like grew up with the people watching almost. Because now a lot of the kids who watched the first one are now in like high school. Yeah. Um, and it's insane. Like that some of the people who are like, oh, I grew up watching the movies are now like 15, 16. And I'm like, wow. Like it's really mind-blowing um but we're, I don't feel I that much of a responsibility I think playing Addison I do um because I think she's a really good role model for young kids and um young girls so I think that definitely comes with a responsibility but as a person I think um like not so much do people have expectations you feel when they meet you mm, maybe yeah um I feel like that's a whole thing with social media that's really interesting. I feel like a lot of, I never know if I should post nothing or post everything, you know? Because <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, um, like on my social media, might assume different things, like with everybody. But I sometimes get in my head of like, should I be posting more so people see this side of my personality? But like no one will ever know the full thing. Um so, yeah, I'm not sure what people actually think of me. Like, that's always very, I think on my social media, since it's more like fashion and like, um, like dance videos and stuff, like they might think that I'm always like, yeah, like, what? yeah, but I'm not at all. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I so don't know. Is there a different version of you that you're portraying in the music that you make? Mm, yes and no. I mean, the like next single I have coming out. Um, title is definitely more of that like cool persona that is definitely like in me but it's not everything I think the more music I'm coming out with is more like vulnerable like the more it goes on so I'm really excited for people to see that because you know I don't I guess I don't necessarily have to post about it but I can you know put it in my music I guess which I I mean it's still a way to share your story right 100 percent 
Yeah. So why is Title the right song to start off this new era if mm. the songs only get more vulnerable from there? Right. I think it was it's cool because all the music that I've I've put out um, has kind of still been through um, like certain managers I was with or with Disney and it hasn't been 100 percent me. Which also, because I feel like when I was younger, I just didn't even know what I really wanted or how to speak up for myself, kind of things like that. And now these songs, I feel like, are really me, and I'm really excited about that. And title specifically is has um like I'm from New York, and so I feel like it has very much of like a New York energy. And so I guess in all of my music, it's coming from a place of like where I'm from and who I am. And um, I guess title is kind of first because it's more like groovy and dancey and it's more about like my roots almost of like okay this is my new era of music and like this is where it's like from kind of thing you grew up between new jersey and new york city right I did. Mm -hmm. so did i so i grew up in wayne really yeah no way yeah i, know. I grew up in like bernardsville do you know yeah, kind of i know morristown yeah of course new jersey I, yeah, okay course. yeah yeah like yeah. right near there yeah i mean uh, yeah when you say morristown i know i know yeah. gladstone a little bit too Gladstone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I lived like right there. I lived in Pea Pack. Cool. Which is like it's so Pea Pack Gladstone is like <laughs> an area in New Jersey and I lived on the Pea Pack side. So Rock on. Yeah. But you would great. commute into New York City for work. I would, yeah. So yeah, I was born in New York and then we moved to New Jersey. And then when I was ten or eleven, I moved back to New York to do auditioning and to be in the business. So and I had no idea what I was doing, but yeah. When did you feel like you had an understanding of what you were doing? Well, I don't know if I still do. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I think it was theater always. Like, that was, like, what I wanted to do. And then it, it shifted over into TV when I started doing, like, auditions for it when I was, like, 11. And I think that was, like, a new passion. I was like, oh, there's, like, multiple things I can do in this kind of world. And I think that's when I knew, like, that's what I wanted to do because there's, like, so many different um, kind of areas that you can uh, go into, whether it's, like, music or acting or movies or TV. And so I think that really excited me as a kid. So what do you know now that qualifies you to do something like executive produce mm. a movie? Um, well, I think, I mean, Zombies 4 is just a, such a cool um, project to do it on because I've done three. Yeah, you, you executive produced three. Yes, I did. And I feel like for four, we're like me and Milo are like way more hands on than we were even for three. And I think it's cool because now that we're, we're introducing a lot of new cast members at, who are younger than us to kind of like um, keep the franchise going. Cool. Um, which is so crazy. And so we we're kind of involved with like the casting and the choreography and just a lot of different things. It's so exciting. And it's cool to learn about behind the scenes. And as an actor, it makes me feel a lot better, especially the casting part, because it's like, oh, all these kids are so talented. But like for this specific role, we just want like w this. Um, and it's not like, oh, like they're terrible. Because in my mind, when I go into a room, I think I'm leaving and they're like, she was so bad. But it's not that at all. So that made me feel a lot better that everyone's very talented. It's just a matter of like what look or what energy they give. Um, so it's been really cool. Interesting to be on the other side. Like it has to be, right? Yes, very much so. Yeah, being in like kind of a casting chair was very surreal because I felt nervous for every because you just know what that feels like. Um, so that was really, really cool. Um, and in being part of the songs too, like hearing the songs that were options but like didn't make it or and uh, and hearing the songs for the first time and like having notes in the script, having notes, like being able to be so a part of it is cool. And it's really cool for Milo and I because we've been a part of this franchise for oh, like six, seven years. So um, I feel like it's really cool that now we get to like have input, um, I, I could which argue, is very rare. So Oh, oh my God, yeah. But yeah. You, nobody would know the characters better than you guys. Yeah. And didn't you make changes to the third movie I heard? Yeah. Um, in the third movie, Zed and Addison didn't say I love you at all. Um, and they were about to like be separated for eternity or whatever the the thing was. Um, so I was like, yeah, it would be really cool if they said I love you because they never do. And it's very mature for like a 
and to your audiences but I was like I think it's okay um so yeah that was that um I'm trying to think what else um there was like little things here and there as well but um that was like the main one that I was like as a fan I was like they need to say I love you um because that's what I always look for in movies and books is like the romance so how do you apply any of what you do on set or bring to a character into the music you're making, right? Because th- the song title is still a part of you, right? Mm. It's about where you're from mm. and, like, a different shade of you. Very cool music video, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Super cool. Thank you. What I, I noticed should... first about the music video is the Tims you were dancing in. You walked oh, in yes. wearing the same Tims. These are them. I said, yeah. yeah, that's a real New Yorker right there. Yes, yeah. <laughs> These are my Tims. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think... It is really cool, I think, with music and, like, storytelling, um, you can also create characters and create stories in music and tell a story that way, just like you do with acting. I think for me, personally, music is very more from my thoughts in my head because it's almost like a form of, like, therapy for me as well because it's really cool to put all of my deepest, darkest thoughts into um a song and then be like oh if somebody listens to it and can relate to it like that's so cool um so i find that really cool and then with title or some other songs that i have too it's like oh people can listen to this and like dance and like Mm. maybe like talk about like because a lot of my friends i've met through dancing like you're like at like a party or something and you start dancing and you don't even talk but it's like oh if my song could be like the conduit for that like that'd be so cool that's a really cool mission yeah and that's interesting. I never think about, you know, the connection somebody makes on the dance floor. Like mm-hmm. that. And you have been dancing for a while. You're a great dancer. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Were, um, I, mean, I feel like you were like a competitive dance kid growing up, yeah? No. I no? Uh, I was just like a, a theater kid, so I did a lot of like jazz squares and stuff like that. <laughs> um, it wasn't until I was like 15 or so that I started really getting into dan- like hip-hop dance and stuff like that. And like training in that world. But So it was like a little bit later on, but I've been dancing I've just loved dancing my whole life. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. How are you writing records? And you're doing it all independently, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So, so, okay. Are you, okay, are you setting up your rooms yourself? Are you finding producers? Yeah. My, one of my really good friends who's also with my music manager, um, his name's Ten Rock, and he works for John Bellion, and cool. he's, he's absolutely incredible and just like um so so great so we've been working together for a really like since like 2019 i want to say wow um yeah so and he did trust yeah uh, he uh no he didn't actually um no like trust was before i met ten rock um and then i met him and he's my age and we have very similar music tastes and um and what we want to accomplish in music. And so we got along really well. And so we started collaborating together. And so all the next songs I'm putting out are with him. Um, and so like title was with Ten Rock. Cool. And we, yeah, just like wrote that together. Um, in New York or here? It was in, um, it's so strange. Because sometimes we do it in New York and then or yeah. LA. I think this one was in LA in my guest house. Yeah. Do you turn into a studio? What are you doing back there? Yeah, he knows how, like, we rent all the equipment, and then he knows how to, like, set everything up. Um, and then we have just been recording a bunch of songs in there. This was, I actually recorded title in 2020. Wow. So it's it's been, I've been sitting on it for a long time and just kind of waiting for the right time for everything to, like, fall into place, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it was a while ago. Why, but, is, why is now right? Hmm. I think now, um, I think I find it was more about like the music itself. I think for a while I was writing a bunch of different genres for like other people, like maybe like labels or um, different A&R that was like, oh, well, maybe I want you to sound like this. And I didn't really know how to stand up for what I wanted. And also my music taste is so all over the place that I was like, oh, maybe I want to do this genre or this genre. And I think a lot of times you get put in, like, boxes of, like, oh, you need to be on this playlist. So, like, what kind of artist do you sound like and, like, what genre are you? And that, like, really, I would always think about that of, like, what genre or, like, what artist should I be, like, kind of emulating? But um, I honestly don't even know what my genre is. I think it's definitely pop, but I just was like, what? 
feels good to me. That's all that matters. Yeah. And it finally clicked, like, in the last, like, year or so that I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to do this independently because nobody really sees what I see yet. And I just have to prove that it works. Fingers crossed, maybe. <laughs> um, and kind of do what I want to do. Yeah. It, 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 by the way, like, that's all that matters. Yeah. Is to make music for you and then the rest is going to fall into place. Mm -hmm. And it will, it, but it has to be a little bit of a shock going from a big movie set or a big TV show set with a crazy budget yeah. to having to do this on your own. I know. I know. Yeah, that was the interesting thing of, like, um, kind of balancing, because, like, with acting, you know, it's a whole other world, but with music, I'm kind of starting from the ground up. Um, so that was, like, a concern as well. So that's why in my mind I was like, oh, it needs to be with, you know— a label and it has to be this like high budget thing but it's like no it doesn't because I think music is like more beautiful like the more like you know authentic it is and totally. the more bare it is yeah and then as you like grow your music it just grows with time um and so yeah so now I'm just doing it independently and with my friends and it feels so great like I really really am excited and in the past like things have been uh, it just hasn't like fully connected to me for me or and as much as I love trust like I love it so much but um, yeah there were certain things in there that I wanted to be changed or different and I just kind of got like vetoed out of my own <laughs> um, music and so I just never wanted to like post about it and but this one I'm just really excited about because it's fully me so um, that is genuinely no way to create right like the no. idea that other people have a, a bigger say than you on I know. what you make or do is is hard. Especially with music, yeah. Yeah, because acting is totally different, right? Like yeah. it's somebody else's script, it's mm -hmm. somebody else's characters, and you have a job to do. Yeah, yeah. With music, it's an extension of you. Yeah, yeah. It's different. Yeah, definitely. So a song like Tidal, I, it, it's not really a question of why now, but like... What is changing that allows you to want to take on this challenge? Like, mm. wh why are you ready to do music independently? I think I'm ready. I think I've just been kind of waiting for a very long time. Like, since I was a kid, I've always wanted to make music and, and perform. And I like to make music to perform. Like, I'm really excited about the performing aspect of it because I just love being on stage. Um, and... I've just been waiting to kind of do that and waiting for kind of other people to like help almost. And I, I do think there's so many people that in my life that help tremendously. But I think I was just waiting for somebody to come in and be like, oh, this is how you do it. Um, because it's so scary to just like put music out there. And I'm oh. like, I don't want to do that unless I know like how it's sort of going to go. And so I think I was just really scared and really in my head of like, if this fails, like, I don't know what I would do. But now it's, like, exciting almost of, like, you know, I there's nothing I can do but try and put music out. And it, I really love it. And so if it does fail, like, at least uh, it's... It's something you love. It's something I love, yeah. And, and it's out there and I'm proud of it. And it's me and it's, like, finished in the way, like, I want it to be. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. But also, like, what a failure is in music today is different than it's ever been before. And music takes time. There's so much music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And music can be discovered at any any moment. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the discoverability of music is crazy. Yeah. TikTok, syncs, whatever. Yeah. And just because the song is put out next week doesn't mean it's going to blow up. So this idea or, or any expectations that one has about a timeline, I you got to throw it out the window. I know. Yeah. It's, like, definitely... I put way too many unrealistic expectations on honestly everything, but um, but especially music. And someone who's been a huge inspiration is Victoria Monet. Oh, she's amazing. I am in love with her. I know she was here. Uh, well, she's right? like, well, I mean, she, I've known her for forever. Yeah, she's been on the show. She yeah. came when Ariane was here that one day. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. known her for, I mean, it has to be 10, maybe nine years, eight years, nine years. I don't know. She's amazing. She's incredible. Such and a gift. She... I mean, the fact that she won a Grammy, like, this year, it's like she's been doing it for so long and just so talented and so deserving. And I just love her music and, like, 
just who she is as a person. But she's always like, I've been doing it. I like moved to LA in like 2009 and I've been grinding and like doing my thing, but it's what I love. And I only put out music that I loved. Like I never like, you know, and so uh, sometimes it, it takes a while and I'm like, I have a lot of confidence in that and, and what she says of like, it, as long as you love doing it, like it will happen. My dad That's always it. says the cream rises to the top. It's like, I think an Irish sure. saying, I have no idea. But um, but yeah, so that gives me confidence as well. So, yeah. It will find the ears and the eyes yeah. that it needs. And then also, if you're putting out art that you believe in and love and feel fulfilled by, as you grow and you take on new roles and new people discover you, there's this whole catalog of music that exists. Yeah. You know, that's different yeah. than the zombies music when they yes. search you. Yes, yes, very much so. Yeah, that is something that's been interesting. Like when you go to uh like my music thing it's like all zombies but i'm kind of okay with that because um i love zombies too and it, that's a part of me as well so there has to be a deep love for for this franchise right to continue very to do so. it yeah very much so i think i mean it's changed my life like being on zombies just like all the i feel like really awesome experiences i have have been due to uh zombies so um and I feel like a lot of the stories I hear of kids like learning lessons or something from the movies, like it just means so much like career wise, but also just like fulfillment wise. Um, so, yeah, it's really, really cool. Is there something that would surprise us about being in Disney Channel original movie that we may most likely are unaware of? Ooh. What's something that I mean? So. Mm, I don't know. I mean, something that's so cool that we get to do is like going to the parks for like promotional stuff. And like when you go there, you uh, when you're ever when you're ever there, you get like a guide kind yeah, of thing. The tour guides are sick. It's insane. And so you get if you're a part of Disney, you get one like free guide a year. <laughs> um, Insane. It's so great. It's like. It's crazy. And, like, yeah, you get to, like, enter through, like, the exits and, like, see behind the scenes of, like, how they make everything. And But no pictures, so um, can't show you evidence. But, um, but yeah, it's really cool. So that's, like, a really cool uh, perk. But I think, like, uh, my experience with Disney has been awesome. I think the only downside is I feel like is people... Like, not Disney, but kind of, like, the general public almost. Like, putting you in a box. Totally. Almost. Like, um, I feel like a lot of times, especially with acting and stuff, it's like, oh, well, and this is maybe, like, two comments or something. But, you know, you see those and you're like, whew. Because I feel like all my negative thoughts, like, when you see a negative comment, it's like, oh, like, um, they see me for, like, who I really am, you know? Um, anyways. Um, I, I think, it, like, when you get put in a box, it's like... Um, like, oh, well, she can't, like, act. Like, she only can Disney act kind of thing. Or, like, stuff like that. Or, like, oh, well, she's a Disney star, so da-da-da. But so you kind of have to break out, quote-unquote, for people to, like, take you seriously. But what's wild I is... think that might be my insecurity. I don't even know if people actually... <laughs> if a lot of people believe that, but... Yeah, but you were on a know? show for five seasons on ABC before oh, you yeah. were <laughs> working for Disney Channel yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. And before that, you were on a show for Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you've been acting way before Disney Channel. Yeah. Were you aware of what that stigma could mean before you took took the dive from ABC into that realm? Yeah, a bit. But I think because I was, like, so young and excited, I just, like, it was such a dream for me. And it still is. Like, being on Disney and being a part of the Disney family is such a dream. So, um, yeah, I, like, going into it, I, I did not think about it at all. And then I think it's almost as you get older. Because, like, when you're a kid, like, you're making stuff for kids and so it's like r really fun and then you get to a certain age and you're like oh, okay like um you know you just want to start making things for your own age or like your own audience um and having a more of a mature audience but I think I'm able to do that through music and you know and hopefully like with acting too like that'd be great oh. but um I'm in no rush to like you know remove myself from the box and be like oh you know, um, but I understand why people do. So, you did the CW show. 
I did. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was so much fun. Well, that's a big deal that you were like you had time to do it. They let you do it. There's a bunch of things in there. Right? Yeah, that is very true. Yeah, that was really fun. We were like in New Orleans, so cool. And now you're going to New Zealand for this next zombies <laughs> movie. Yeah, and, and they've never shot a zombies there before. No. Yeah, what? they've always been in Toronto. Okay. Yeah. Why New Zealand? It's pretty far. Um, it's beautiful. So I've never been. I don't know. I, yeah. So I'm really excited to just explore and be in a completely new on the other side of the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, have you been to New Zealand? No, I, I've been to Australia. Oh. Have you been there? No, I haven't. Oh, I want to go amazing. after. Yeah. yeah Where have go. you been in Australia? Uh, I've been to Sydney, Adelaide, and Melbourne. Ooh. Yeah, it's all beautiful. Yeah. Which city do you like the best? Sydney. Like, where do you think I should go? Sydney? Yeah. Okay, cool. Go, go to Sydney and then maybe go to Melbourne or the Gold Coast is really pretty. Okay. I've never been, but I hear really good things about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You got to go. And okay. It's like three hours away. That's really yeah. fucking cool that you get to go to New Zealand and shoot a movie. Yeah, and I know. Can so. you break down the the, the, the the threads that connect all these movies because <laughs> we have somebody on my team who is a super Yikes. fan of the movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she is of the belief, and from my understanding, she could be right, oh? that the core messaging showcases the racial divide that exists Very at true. first between humans and zombies. Yep. But then all of these other cultures and or races or however you mm -hmm. want to look at it, and it's the coexisting of everybody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, feel <laughs> they touch on everything, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it, so it's spot on there. Yeah. I okay, mean, cool. Yeah. I think it's like I, every movie, there's always different kind of species that come in and everybody's like, you're different. Like, and then you start to get to know the species and you're like, wait, they're just like us and like we can work together. Yes. So, yeah, it's very much about um, like accepting differences and like celebrating diversity and stuff like that, yeah, and and overcoming any obstacle that could exist in people's ways, yeah, like, by talking about it. Oh my gosh, it's awesome, <laughs> and, and singing about it. We, and we love a sing and we love a dance that can solve a real societal problem, <laughs> yeah. and that's what's happening. Like the first zombie to attend university, huge, yeah, huge. The, the first, I believe, female to work at Z Corp. Breaking a glass yeah. ceiling, yeah. big shit. Yeah. And they even say it. It's a very woke series of movies. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's awesome. No, yeah, they, like, I remember in the first, the first one's pretty, pretty deep. Um, I remember even watching it being like, whoa. Like, there's uh, <laughs> someone, like, spray paints, like, no zombies on the thing, and then one of the characters puts a K and a W at the end, so it's, like, no zombies. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, but it's like such a, I'm like, that's deep for a kid's movie. But is it actually Damn. a kid's movie? Um, no, maybe not. It's a family movie. I think it is a, yeah, a family movie. It's like Bluey. Have you seen Bluey? Yeah, it's for the family. Oh, Bluey is my favorite. I watch it every single night before I go to bed. Because you have moral taste and respect yes, for yourself exactly. and integrity. <laughs> yeah, no, and everyone's like, you watch, like, a kid's show for, like, babies, but it is the, like, deepest, darkest show I've, okay. <laughs> I've ever watched. But at its core, it wants people to be a good person from watching, correct? A hundred percent. Yeah, because it's for, I feel like it's for parents and kids, so, like, kind of like zombies, like, like parents can watch it and be like, oh, these are lessons I want to teach my kids um, and then kids are like, it's understandable for kids because it's kind of presented in like yeah. a fun way. But by the way, every historically throughout culture, the most successful kids TV shows on Disney and Nick have been made not for children, but for families. Like it's true. Every single one. Ross like Carly, was just talking about this with Austin and Allie. Austin and Allie. Yeah. Hannah Montana. Very true. Wizards. SpongeBob. SpongeBob. You love it's SpongeBob. My favorite. It's my favorite. Yeah. You have taste. You have yeah. class. Come on. Wow. Yeah. SpongeBob's amazing. Tom Kenny's a genius. I love Tom Kenny so much. Yeah, you know him? You met him? I do. Uh, you definitely are in the, you've definitely been at events where you see him. Yeah. Diedrich, who played my dad on American Housewife, they, they do like voiceover work together. Cool. And so every year for my birthday, he would have Tom Kenny be like, Happy birthday, Meg. But like, and I can't even do it. But like as SpongeBob. Sick. Um, And it was insane. I cried every year. So <laughs> it's so cool. And you two are a voice actor. You're oh, in the, yeah. the Legion of Superheroes. Mm -hmm. You play Supergirl. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's so cool. Yeah, playing Supergirl was incredible. I, uh, yeah, that's also, speaking of dark, darkness, she has a lot of darkness. darkness. <laughs> um, But it was 
it was really cool. And I love the ADR part of it. So like after you're done uh, doing the voiceover work afterwards, like you have to go like, huh, 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 like in the mic <laughs> for like the fighting and like the breathing. And I remember one time I had to be drinking soup. So like we got water in a cup and I was like, <laughs> like in the mic. Said in real, I believe That's it. Really I, so I, I, I oh, really? it like you yeah. were sipping soup. So. Nice. Um, yeah. So that aspect is really fun. How do you um, change your voice for her? Who? I think at the beginning she was younger, so it was like more like high pitched. And then as she got older, and a lot of awful things were happening, like she talked more like like jaded almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so just kind of like a deeper tone, I guess. Yeah. Is that fun? So much fun. Doing animated stuff is great. At first, it's really oh. nerve-wracking because you just have to, like, let yourself go and, like, just be funny and weird. Um, but once you do, like, once you do that, it's so much fun. Like, you could do whatever you want. Yeah. Will, you, will you be in the new Zombies animated series? Yes. That has been, honestly, maybe the most fun project I've ever done. Um, and it was, like, because it's Addison, but we did so many crazy stuff like there's this one character in there that one day I was sometimes when I like talk I like some like Jersey New York <laughs> words come out and they thought that was so funny that they created a character that was like from New York it was like Addison's alter ego but she talked like this and it was like we did a whole episode like that and it was so funny yeah it was iconic. like you stink it was great it was awesome. So that was so much fun. Um, and yeah, there's so many characters that we just make up and um, it's just like, it doesn't feel like work at all. So how does that work? Will you do numerous episodes in a day? Like what's yeah. the flow on that? Yeah, we'll probably do like five or six episodes depending on how long they are. Cause some like Addison's not in as much or whatever. And then there's some songs like every episode. So we record songs too, but um yeah, we just get to like mess around. It's like almost like doing bits like all day. We just keep going and improving and stuff. It's so great. Is it you alone in the room or is anybody with you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's me alone in the room. A couple times me and Milo did like joint sessions if like the episodes had a lot of us in it. And those are always fun because you can like work off each other. So it, that's are, pretty cool. Is there any impro improvisation in these movies or is it very much to the script? Um... It's pretty much to the script, but, like, on the last take, our director, Paul, will be like, okay, this one's for you, so you can just, like, kind of do whatever you want. So, like, the, but um, sometimes they'll use it. Sometimes they won't, so. But it's still fun to do. Do you, have, like, why not? Do you have any idea, like, what type of movie you're making in the moment? Or does it, o or is it only, like, when you're done, done with it and watching it, do you really understand the story you're telling? Ooh. I feel like, um, I feel like when you, like, read scripts to movies you can get like a general gist of it but it's not I feel like until you're on set and you're like in hair and makeup and costume and you're there it's like in the environment it's like when it really clicks like of like oh okay like this is the tone and the theme um but especially for the zombie movies like it's fun not seeing the other scenes of like what people do and so when it's like you know the scenes that are coming up but when you see them do it it's like oh that's like what they did and like that's really cool um so yeah it's really cool when you're making music and writing a song do you know what type of story you're trying to tell at the beginning or oh sometimes yeah like sometimes i will go into a session and be like this is what's happening and this is like something that i really want to write about um and i'm definitely been on the theme of like spiral these days because <laughs> Um, that's all I seem to be doing. So, <laughs> so a lot of the songs are about like spiraling or kind of like inner thoughts, like overthinking thoughts kind of. Um, but sometimes it's like a word, like with title, um, we were talking about something in the studio, like me and 10 rock, some of the people that were there and I forget who we were talking about. We we're like, Oh, I just hope they don't become another title or something. And we were like, that's kind of cool. Mm. And so then we wrote the song with that in mind of like talking to a guy and being like, don't be another title. But that wasn't necessarily the context of, um, or maybe it was about a guy. I can't remember. But the song is about a guy. So, so yeah. So it just kind of presented itself based on the title. 
Yeah. And and sometimes it's like a if you're using like a sample or something, like in the sample, it's like, okay, like let's use a word from there. Will you produce like will you write to a beat or do you write to nothing and then put it to a beat? Ooh, it that also depends too. I feel like most of the time it's like a, I I'm like, oh, this is kind of the concept I want to write. And then Ten Rocker, the producer I'm with, will kind of start building from there. Um, and then we kind of go in and like words will pop out. Cause when you do like melodic passes where you just sing into the mic and say nothing, sometimes you say a word and you're like, oh, maybe that's what that ooh, maybe that's <laughs> what that is. So yeah, it kind of depends. What are you thinking? Well, you said it's like pop music, but it does lean towards R and B, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I think um my influences of like what I grew up with are all R and B and like um soul kind of. Like that's what I what my parents listened to, like in the house and like what I grew up listening to. So yeah, that's definitely my like main influence, but um but I also wanted to make it like current and uh for a while, I just wanted to do pure R and B, and that's like all I wanted to do. Really? Um, What's wrong with that? Why can't you do it? Yeah. What changes? I would. I would love to. Um, and I think I still want to, like, in the future. But I think, uh, for now, I'm like, I think it's cool to kind of have like a interesting new like hybrid of like kind of pop music and um, R and B, and I like having it be more like influenced in there, um, and kind of building from there. Um, but yeah, and I love live instruments in songs too and like heavy drums and i also love choir vocals i think in every single one of my songs there's like some like gang vocal in the background because i don't know why it's just so satisfying um yeah how are you cutting those gang vocals um sometimes it will be like a bunch of people in a room and like a mic in the center and everyone just says it a million times until it sounds like there's like hundreds of people but then also uh, a lot of what producers do now, like they get packs like um, like a gospel choir pack and AI it. Really? Isn't that insane? That is crazy. Yeah. So they'll just take whatever I just sung and then put the choir vocals like and mesh them together. And so then they can just copy and paste it. And then like while I'm singing, there's just like a choir singing the same thing. Oh, that's sick. And it sounds real. Terrifying, <laughs> but cool. Technology yeah. is crazy, I know. man. Yeah. How do you feel about like chat GPT and stuff AI like in general? I mean or the, yeah, or the AI whole thing general. is like very wild. I mean, chat GPT is like inspirational like starters or thought starters, whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't know. We've had the discussion around like here. Mm. Cause like there is always a discussion of like, oh, don't you want to be interviewing people when you're dead? Like, what if we were able to <laughs> yeah. do all these things? You yeah. know, Without you being here, you sit down in a room for three hours and then you don't need to show up for an entire year. Yeah. And then come back and talk to us for three hours. That's and crazy. It, It's all real. Yeah. It is all real. Like, yeah. I don't know if I'll get in trouble for talking about any of it, but like, <laughs> it is very real. It and is. And you could do a movie tomorrow and instead of having actors dub your, like, dub over you in different languages, they could use AI to have you speak. I Every know. language under the sun. And the only reason it's not in existence today is because of the unions. Yeah. It's not a question of do they have the tech? Fuck yeah, they got the tech. Yeah. And breaking news, it's way more cost effective and probably way better. I know. Than any other option. But the reality is the Im when you implement tech like that, the ripple effect yeah. is very tangible and real. Yeah. No, it's so true. Have you seen the, the, um, the Black Mirror episode? With um, oh, what's it called? Which one? It's about like AI. Um, Jones, Joan is awful. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. watching god. that, I was like, it's like basically they they are like filming her life, but it's not her. It's an actress, but they like put her like That's what crazy. is it called? Like likeness or something? Like yeah, on, on somebody, and so it's not her, but she like in real life is getting like canceled pretty much for what she's doing, but it's not her. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, like that was so I that kept me up for a couple nights. That was crazy. I was like, that's wild. But, but I think there is peace in knowing that AI stands to change almost everybody's job. There's not yeah. like one sector that's going to be more impacted than the other. That's I true. think every sector of business. That's very true. Has the ability to be impacted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely makes things more convenient, which is really cool. But it's just like, 
really scary. And people use it for music, right? Like we've had great Shoot. musicians sit on our couch, like Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins, go mm. like, this should push people. Pumpkins. Yeah, incredible. Mm. Like this should push people creatively. This can give people creative thought starters. Oh, Michael yeah. Bolton said the same, something similar. No, Michael Bolton hates it. <laughs> Billy Corgan is kind of down for it. And then like, you know, Rivers Cuomo has been using a version of like an AI thing that he built himself for a long time. He uses this algorithmic based approach to music where like, or it's like a generator. So he, if he has inspiration, he files it away into certain categories and then he uses a generator to put it all together and feed him inspiration. Wow. But it's built off of him. If that makes any sense. Yeah, so, like, yeah. if he has a riff idea, the riff idea goes into this thing. If he has a lyric idea or a title idea. That is and so then it surreal. generates it all. Yeah, it's cool. Because it's like a living being that's, like, from... Him. Him. It's like an extension wow. of himself or a way to, like, catalog, like, uh, catalog and then yeah. utilize his inspiration. It just feels like a movie. I think what I think, like, all those, like, robot movies, I'm like, I feel like there's so many of them. It's like, that's we real. should, like, isn't that scary? Like, you know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Are you scared, Dan? No, I just think you have to accept it. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. Got True. It. <laughs> Look at you. Facts. <laughs> Good approach yeah, to that. There it brother. is. <laughs> <laughs> Good approach. It's accepted. It. Surrender. By the way, Meg Donnelly's music is waiting for you below. You can grab it wherever you stream. Link down there. Thanks. Duh. <laughs> Qu quickly before I get to another question I think Just Like You on your other album is really good Oh thank you That song's great I really appreciate it Yeah I really um, I was really proud of that song Also I'm a huge fan of Code of the Friend Yeah Who's on it And you I've guys, been... It felt so like natural It didn't yes. feel like it was a forced feature Yes it was so cool Like we just sent it to him being like Let's see if he wants to do it Like thinking nothing of it And he was like oh yeah for sure And it was so great. And then we did like a music video thing together and um it was just so natural. He was so cool. And um yeah, I really like that song that a lot. Real good. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Well, I heard Tight on. I was like, what's the old music sound like cuz yeah. I didn't want to put you in the box, but I was like, oh, she was a young Disney yeah. girl. It's going to be just some pop music. Right, and I went back right. and I was like, oh, it's not at all. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I thought it sounded great. <laughs> Thank you. I really yeah. appreciate that. I, I thought Trust was great. So what are you taking Thanks. with you for making that album that you are carrying with you into this independent chapter of your career? Mm. I think I definitely, I feel like all of those songs were definitely, like, I really love them a lot. I just, like, think they weren't, like, finished in my mind. Like, there was still a lot of, like, fleshing out to do, I guess. Um, but that base of, like, R&B and... Um, kind of just like you um, with like the talk box and everything like that is still very much me and a part of me. And so um, and but yeah, I just kind of wanted to find a nice hybrid of kind of still like upbeat and current, but having those R&B influences. And I looked on there's this thing on um, this website called everynoise.com or something. It's like linked to Spotify, I want to say. And it has all of these crazy sub genres of Spotify. So it's like um like one of them is like Nigerian EDM or like uh like really like sub 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 groups. Um I honestly don't know why I like came up with that one and can't think of anything else, but like <laughs> so, like Swedish rap. This is Japanese progressive house. Yes, Japanese progressive house and you click on it and they have playlists made for you. So when I typed in my name, it obviously said like movie like movie movie songs like uh, from and then it said New York pop or like okay. NYC pop and I was like okay cool because I, I looked on that playlist and Haley Knox is on there we love and Haley I am Knox. such a huge fan of her and her music is is definitely a huge inspiration because I think she does a cool like mix of like R&B influences with singer songwriter but it's still pop and yeah uh, I that's love that like you just referenced Haley Knox. Yeah, I love her. We were just talking I about love her the other day. Charismatic. That's like one of my favorite songs so and good. I think it's really cool that it's still like deep concepts but pop but also R&B. And then she was on that on New York City pop and I was like, Taste. "All right, I think this is a nice home." No, that's good. So maybe I'll say <laughs> keep saying that. That that's the genre, I guess. I'm here for that. I don't know. Yeah, it's like pop with like a little bit of soul. And, and by the way, that yeah, mm -hmm. that is that could be R and B, that could be yeah. hip hop, that could be anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be the same thing every time. That's true. Yeah. It's whatever you feel. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think that's another misconception is that 
uh, people can only make like one genre of music for, you know, ever. But like, obviously it like progresses, but I think even on the same album, you can have different like genres of songs and stuff. Fuck yeah. Um, I think that's so cool. Cause it's like, okay, this person kind of dabbles in everything. Um, so I think that's really cool. What's the scariest part about doing this thing on your own? Ooh, I'm trying to think. I think it's definitely having a lot of these like visions and stuff that I want to do. And then with like my own budget and my own um, kind of thoughts and, and the people I have is like kind of making sure that the visions are as accurate in my head as it is um, like out there in yeah. the world. Um, and I think with title, it's exactly what I wanted, which is really cool. I just wanted like a fun video that kind of encapsulates like New York and Tribe Called Quest is one of my favorite groups and like and they have a, for electric relaxation their whole um music video is them in New York and they're at like a diner and they're like grooving so that's kind of what title was like based off of um and so it kind of encapsulated you know the New York vibe and just having fun and uh that's all I really wanted and it ended up working out really well but we were just like Riffing and running around the city and no permits or anything. We were just yeah, I was like, wondering that. Hopefully this works out. Yeah. <laughs> and it did. So yeah. And it but it was really uh I honestly was just like at the beginning of the day, I'm like, am I gonna be able to do this? Cause there's so many people like walking by or watching or like being like, get out of here, and, like stuff like that. And so I was like, <laughs> Am I gonna be able to like keep going? And then as soon as we started doing it, I was like, I have no other option than to just go for it Fuck but yeah. like in front of the cafe and stuff like there was like people in the cafe workers at the cafe walking around and i was like oh i was like let's do it were you so, embarrassed at all because i was watching one of the dance scenes and you're like in an alley and there's people in the back just kind of like yes, looking at you. What's going yeah on down there? that was the end of the day so by that point i was like i ripped the band-aid off and i was like <laughs> yeah what are you gonna do and like a lot of some people were like yelling at us and uh and like all of this like uh, or like laughing or anything like that and i just by the end of the cafe scene, in, I was just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, especially the subway, because anything goes down on the subway. Yeah. So that, that was like, I was like, way, yeah, it's fine. Anything goes yeah. in most parts of New York. Yes, exactly. So. so it's not out of the ordinary that that's happening. Even in LA, honestly, I feel like everybody's like oh filming. God. So it's not out of like the ordinary, but like, it's still kind of embarrassing at first because it's like, it's kind of in public, you know. But it's funny in LA they'll stop you for permits, but in New York City they don't care. No, they yeah, have other things going on. No, if you're on like side streets or alleyways, like no one cares. Like it's only I, I'm sure like in like Central Park and like main areas, Times Square maybe. Yeah, maybe. There's but honestly, so many people not filming. Even. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Times Square. There's so many people filming. Yeah, but in so. LA they will ask you for a permit. Like they'll they will, they, yeah. they will find you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because it's the business. Yeah, they don't play around here. Look at you. You, you have to executive produce, create your music videos. Yeah. You run point on everything. You're yeah. learning the business in a whole new way, I'm assuming. A hundred percent, yeah. I feel like doing it since I was a kid, it's like you kind of expect like, okay, someone tells you where to go, like where your mark is, what totally. to do. And then like growing up, I just realized like, oh, shit, no one's going to do this. Like I have to do it. Um, and I honestly like really accepted that last year of like, I just need to do this on my own and, and figure it out. Um, cause if not, it's just not going to get done. And it's such a simple thing, but I really was like holding myself back a lot. Um, also I feel like in the business too, like communicating is a huge thing as well. Cause I would just say yes. And to like everything, um, and <laughs> like improv, I and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I would never say no. And now I'm trying to learn how to do that. Cause that's a huge thing. Cause you just kind of can get easily walked over if you're like, like, too nice and yeah. And you can't do any, everything in any business. Um, but uh, especially in this one. Yeah. It's really, I give you a lot of credit, and I, I do think independent musicians deserve the most respect, and Thanks. you're going to rise, dude. Thank Cream you. rises to the top, and what, <laughs> what do I say, Dan? Like a tennis ball, all good songs will float to the top. That, no. That no, like a tennis ball underwater oh, makes underwater, it to the top. That's the part. <laughs> like, the underwater part. <laughs> Forgot the important part about that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it, yeah. Anyway, hilarious. it's going to rise and hit the ears and, and the eyes of the people who need to see it. Thank you. It's true. And then on top of that, like, you're always your own priority. You don't need to, mm. like, 
competing in the music industry is enough of a competition. The last thing you need is to compete in the outside world and then inside at your own label to get attention. Yeah. And that happens every single second of every day. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. No, it's so true. How did you get into oh. podcasting? I started a radio show from my bedroom in New Jersey 17 years ago. No way. When I had no friends. In Wayne? In Wayne. Ah! Yeah. That's so... Did you ever live in the city? Uh, No, but we worked no. in the city. I did. You did, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the East Village for five where? years. Where East Village? That's so cool. Yeah, he is cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. That's where I want to live if I if I move back. Um, I think it's so cool. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Well, no more. No, now we're here in Los no. Angeles. Yeah, now we're yeah. That's I, great though. I worked uh, so like I started from my bedroom and then I worked in a studio at this radio startup that was in Jersey City at Exchange Place. Oh, um, yeah. It was where Z100 used to be. Okay. And then. We and then I worked at a studio that they had for me in Soho at Spring and Broadway. Nice. Yeah, I, yeah, I, feel I know like exactly where that is. You filmed your music video close to there. Yes, we did. Yeah, I yeah. It tell. was like in Soho, <laughs> yeah. West Village, East Village. Yeah. That's my. That's crazy. One of my favorite neighborhoods. And me then, too. Uh, and then I worked for Nickelodeon for a bunch of years. Oh wow. Yeah. Then I worked at fifteen fifteen Broadway in Times Square. Yeah, I know exactly where that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you like have the to Viacom, the building. Bu- like yeah, for, Viacom, yeah. No way. Yeah, I worked from like uh, I worked. I auditioned the, in there so, so many times, <laughs> like thirty six floor or something. Yeah, thirty six yeah, 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 yeah. or thirty two is the audition floor. Yeah, it's terrible. Well, um, yeah, forty two is the executive floor, and then they had the TRL studios, and then we worked when we met was at a radio studio on fifty seventh and tenth on the Upper West Side. No way! I grew up on fifty sixth and tenth. Oh my god. Wow. Wait, we're yeah, at the like CBS Hell's Bro- Kitchen. We're CBS Studio? Spro- yeah, yeah, that was us. What? Yeah, no CBS way. Broadcast Center. Wait, that's crazy. That's crazy. Oh my God, you're literally a block away. <laughs> yeah, I was right there, like near like Terminal 5 yeah. and all that. Yeah, oh, I you- lived right there. That's crazy. Uh, that is wow. crazy. Wow. Yeah, and I went to PCS for like one semester. Oh my God. So yeah. maybe I'm. So uh, I don't know. You're young, right? You're 23? Yeah. Yeah, you don't know. Oh, I have so many friends who went to PCS. Really? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, Nat Wolf, Alex yeah. Wolf. Alex Wolf was in my um, in he when I was a sophomore, he was a senior. Yeah, like my friend, and we were really, we're really good friends. He's awesome. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, my be- I've known them since I was fourteen years old. Wow. But then, like, my friend Dylan, my friend Steph, I know so many people went to PC. That's so wild. It feels like I was there for all like from like seventh grade to like senior year like because i'm so close with everybody there i went for one spring semester like not even a whole semester for sophomore year like spring but like i connected with everybody so well and that place was just it was so much fun it was really really cool by the way what pcs is is called professional children's school and it housed everybody from like kid race car drivers to kid ping pong players to actors to ballerinas it It was like and it is where stars are born I, yes, but also like, like yep. that. It was a combination of like really talented people and then people who had really rich parents. <laughs> yeah, most of it. I feel like it most was people were wealth. That. It yeah, was yeah, all yeah. wealth connected. Yeah. Because breaking fucking news, you have to be rich to be a kid and pursue a professional ping pong career. I know. Or a professional race car career. Very like, true. Like that's not just a, that's not a hobby for the plebes yeah. or for me. Okay, that's for the upper echelon of society. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember being at a PCS party. <laughs> and Jake T. Austin was there, and he because oh. he was going there at the time. Yeah. Oh. And he was super drunk, and I remember somebody going, "Oh, that's a thirty-six million dollar painting," and that was like, and it was like this fucking open house party, like at it's some insane. apartment. Yeah, some of the houses I went to, Nuts. like I mean, apartment house, it, insane. Nuts. I was like, this is this can't be real. I it was mind boggling. This one that I was in was right across the street from the Met and like the wow. paintings on the wall. Yeah, because a lot of the kids lived on like the Upper East Side, Upper West Side, like well. uh, so beautiful. And the I think the coolest part was like a lot of the kids that were um, exchange students for like for Juilliard or SAB, which yeah. is like the School of American Ballet. They like partnered with PCS. So like they would like be boarding, but like so they at like 10 a.m. like all the ballerina girls would like promptly walk out of the class and like <laughs> Go to, and like so they worked around like their schedule. Well, that was the part of the point of the or, school, like, right? The big like cellos, like they'd be walking down the <laughs> hallway, and I was like, oh, that's like my friend Ramin that's... went there. Remember Ramin? Mm-hmm. Dylan went there. Zach went there. My friend Wyatt. Like I, yeah, dude. Like, that's so yeah, wild. Have, like, that's such friends. a small world. Yeah. yeah, it was so fun. There was also a Japanese boy band that were exchange students. Really? At um our high school, that was so cool. Well, so uh, like, the point of it is like. 
you could go to this school and then leave whenever you needed to because yeah. you had the right to just work mm-hmm. as, as needed. Yeah. Mm. And they wouldn't bat an eye. Yeah. They would, like, adjust the, the, the schedule around you. Yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Don't you speak Jack- Japanese? I do a bit because of the, um, like, yeah, there is, like, 10 or so members there. And wow. they were really cool. And then I might have liked one of them. Um, but they didn't um, speak any, uh, <laughs> they didn't speak much English. And so me and my friends became really close with them. And then I just started learning from like YouTube videos. And then I actually started taking classes um, at the Fuji school cool. here in LA. So suggest going if you want to learn Japanese. It's so great. And so. You this is all for a guy or? Wow. Yeah. Are you dating that guy from the show you were in? Yes. Yeah. Drake. It was, it's like not confirmed, but it is confirmed because you guys do red carpets together. So yes, like everyone's yeah. like, are they dating? Are they not dating? I know. Yeah. We're not like trying to hide it at all. It's just that, yeah, I feel like on my last couple relationships, it was very like public. And so now I'm kind of like, you know, trying to keep it. I, it's not even private because I, I will like talk about it as much as possible oh, yeah, because yeah. I love him so much and you, I'm talking about it now. But um, this was super easy. It was super easy, but you just on social answer. media in general, I'm like I like having that like privacy. Totally. But, yeah, because putting it all out there, it kind of becomes like there, like public too, and so yeah, um, it becomes but, something that's not yours. And exactly. Also, it becomes this thing that you kind of got to keep up between the relationship, yes. and it's it's. Yeah. Was that like a conversation that you guys had about keeping it silent like that, but not being private necessarily? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, like we've had conversations about it, but it's nothing to like, it's just, you know, if we feel like posting about each other, like we can, and it, it's not like off limits. It's not like we're hiding each other or anything, but um, just not at like, you know, every day publicly anymore. Cause I used to do that. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, I kind of like, the way things are now but um but i love doing red carpets with him because it's it's very um um easy because yeah. he's so um like great at keeping like calm energy and i always get so nervous so um yeah that's healthy beautiful balance yeah it's great he's really cool um and i feel like the past year or so like he has just been incredible even for like music and acting and stuff like just he just has such great advice and i feel like i've my communication has gone a lot better um, because of him, so I'm that, I'm grateful for that. That's great. Yeah. Somebody making you into a better version of yourself. Yes. Sounds yes. like a healthy and relationship. Hopefully, I do the same for him. Yes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but he does a lot for me, so yeah. That's beautiful. Mm. That's really special. Yeah. Are you going out on auditions, or are you focused on just the stuff that you have already booked and are committed to? Yeah, I have been. Yeah, I, I've been auditioning. Like quite a bit. I mean, like there was a strike and then Christmas, New yeah, Year. Yeah. So, but now I feel like it's all starting to like kind of speed back up. So, yeah, I have been and, you know, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, because after I think I'm more auditioning for stuff like after for After Zombies. So, um, yeah. But then also it, it's so much time for music as well, because in my career, I haven't really had a lot of time for that. Um, so now I'm, you know. I have a lot of time to sit and figure out what I want to do. So, do we have an album ready, ready to go, or are you? I have it? a lot of songs. I have like an EP ready. So I think the plan is, as of right now, is uh, in the next couple of months, like releasing three singles. So like title and then two others, cool. which I'm so excited about. Um, and I have there's like really cool like concepts for them. So I'm I'm really excited. And then, kind of from there, I have like an EP. Um, and, but the, I think that's kind of up in the air just to see, um, kind of like the three singles first and then see what's going on. And then I have an EP ready. So you make all your own decisions though. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely these three singles. And then from there, there's like plan A, B, C, D, you know, a bunch of different ways we could go. So, um, yeah, just kind of throwing it out there. And I feel like this is more, even though I'm ready for them to be out, it's kind of like a trial period of like, hey, here's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, this is my thing. Like, um, and hopefully, like, we'll, um, like, people will like it and then kind of go from there. So they will. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Listen to McDonald's music, please. Thank There's you. a link below. They will. <laughs> they will. <laughs> Thank you. Dan likes it. I, I thought it was it. great. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. What are you thinking? 
Do you think the Zombies franchise would have lasted this long if you and Milo didn't have such a good friendship? Oh. Um, you know, I don't know. Because I think, you know, Milo and I's friendship and, and, uh, and chemistry in the movies, I think, is, like, a huge part of it. And also just, I guess, like, the interviews and stuff we do are always, yeah. like, really... that's where I see you guys together all the time. Yes, yeah. Like, really fun and connected because we do get along so well. Um... So, yeah, I think that definitely has a, a, a part of it for sure. I think, um, uh, yeah, I think so. Because I also think the franchise is, is a lot about um, Zed and Addison, too. So mm -hmm. I think um, that definitely helps. Yeah. But I also think, like, everybody in the cast is really talented and, and the messages of the movies are really uh, good, too. And the music's really cool. So but I think that does have a lot to do with it, yeah. Yeah. Were, you, were you signed to Disney's label, Hollywood at all? Mm -mm. I was like, I came right at the end of kind of that era of like... Um, totally. People being a part of Disney and, uh, you know, being a part of Hollywood Records. and Because Disney didn't really have that much say in um, like what I did or like career-wise. Like they never really had that... Um, I don't even know what the right word is. Like power almost yeah. over that so i think but i know there's a lot of experiences where that has been the case totally. so i think i kind of came at like the last kind of yeah. um era of that did you do trust independently yes yeah so you've been doing this on your own funding yeah. your own career for a minute yeah why did i think you had a partner at one point at least for trust mm. but that's i don't think so maybe for like distribution and stuff but yeah i wasn't with a label or anything yeah do you have any want or desire to, or do you really see this as something that you can own and control on your, your, yourself? I would a hundred percent want to do it on my own, like forever, because I, you know, you just have so much creative control and everything, but the, um, for the visions and like the creative ideas, like the money aspect is definitely something that's lacking. And I think, and also just pushing it out and having more of an audience. And I feel like labels are are great at kind of uh, capturing a broader audience and then totally. also is able to help with the vision um, and can kind of put financing behind a bunch of like performances, yeah. like doing like a tour, all of that stuff. Like if I had to do that all on my own, like, ooh, I don't know if I if I could. So, so. why haven't you signed to a label? Um, and it can't be because they don't want you. Well, no, I think like they're like the labels I, I've met with. It's it's more been like, oh, um, we can help it. Like we just need to see like I guess they ne didn't really believe in what I was saying because they wanted it to be like more pop, like way more pop than I am uh, capable of or i mean i could but i i'm just like Ugh, i don't know but they also want you to fill a mold that they think you're already in right yeah because i think there's an audience difference like with zombies and, and american housewife and stuff it's like families and kids and so it's like how are is your music going to um bridge that gap and so they kind of were like oh you should make more pop because it's more like kid friendly totally. um which i completely understand as like a business i'd be like I, how does this connect? And so I just had to figure that out on my own. But I guess because labels don't really work like they used to. Like totally. it, it used to be like you saw someone singing in the street and you're like, I'm going to make you a star, kid. <laughs> and they kind of did every like I said, like I was expecting like help almost. It's not the case. Not the case at no. all. It's the, like you, you do TikTok your... numbers. Yes. And I have such a hard time posting on social media because every time I do, I'm like, is this how I want people to perceive me like is this right and so i've really had to rip the band-aid off with that as well um not just dancing in the middle of the street <laughs> um but also posting a lot and that's like really hard um but that is something that with this generation you just like have to do totally to like for people to discover your music um so yeah i've just been doing that but that's a huge part of like the label thing is like is um like numbers on social media. No, you're so right. Like, um, they'll sign you, but yeah. then you have to show. Which is unfortunate, but I, I get why. Like, I understand why. They sign you, and then you have to just perform again, right? Like, they're not going to move anything or work something until it's showing so much data to warrant them to work it, you know? 100%, because there's so much music now, 
and so many artists doing so like all different types of things and so if there's no like audience behind it it's like why would you in invest in in that if there's like a million other you know yeah totally um so i get it i really do it's it's very i don't think anybody is like a fan of the model but it's kind of just like like ai it's just kind of like that's just like the way it is so but keep doing your own thing and then you could build yeah. a story in a case as to exactly. why you know when it's time for a label to step in, you can do it on your own terms and yeah. utilize what they have to just amplify what you've already built. Of course, because you can 100% focus on, like, the negatives of that. But I think, like, I see it in a, a positive of, like, now I can create my own music and, and kind of, like, prove to, um, I don't know, like, labels or something that I, um, that there is an audience and, like, there is people that are, like, wanting to do it. And I, and it's, like, cool to know it's, like, if that ends up happening, it's like, oh, I did that on my own. Totally. And um, uh, totally. so, yeah, so I think that's really cool. And I think um, then, I yeah, I just have to show that there's an audience for it. And that's kind of like how I look at it of like, oh, that's my job is to, you know, um, prove that. So, yeah. Go listen. All of, <laughs> all of McDonald's music is waiting for you. Link below. Thank you. You mentioned live shows. Are you worried that, like, your younger fans or anybody is going to come to your shows expecting you to sing, like, Someday? Ah, uh, definitely, yeah. Because I, I, I feel like um, that's always been, like, a concern. Um, but I feel like it would be so cool to do that. Like, I think it would be great if you did that. Yeah, because um, a lot of times, like, you know, I love Ariana Grande. And a lot of times she sings like Victoria songs with like Liz <laughs> Gillies on tour. And it's like it. insane. Or like uh, Miley Cyrus sings like um, Hannah Montana songs sometimes. Mm -hmm. And like um, I think it's really cool to kind of nod back to um, that. So I, I definitely am like open to that. But yeah, it won't be like, you know, a zombies concert of like zombie <laughs> songs. But I think the hope is that with a lot of people who have come out of Disney, it's like those audiences kind of grow with you. And and <laughs> There's a lot of newer fans now who are going to start from Zombies 4. And then so it's just going to keep going, especially with streaming. It's like you can kind of like watch all of them. So I think it's going to keep getting younger. But the oldest audience who watched it on TV when they're younger are like 16. Mm -hmm. So I think hopefully, fingers crossed, it like transfers uh, to them. And they're like, oh, OK, I'm actually a fan of this and a fan of Zombies as well. So that's kind of the hope. Dude, um, our very own Chicky Kelsey, who's a big Zombies fan, has been waiting for the Meg Donnelly pop era to come. Ah! <laughs> and it's here. Yeah. It's been here, but she's now fully invested in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is, like, so cool and something for that I'll be forever grateful for for Zombies and Disney in general. It's, like, they do such a good job at, like, um, just having people who kind of stay with your entire career and and— because when you're younger, like, those people that you watch, like, you just kind of always, like, they have a part of your heart, you know? Totally. Like, Cheetah Girls and High School Musical will always be in my soul. And Hannah Montana, too. Oh, my God. Um, and so I will follow them and love them for the rest of my life just because they're such a huge part of my upbringing. Which is just, that hasn't connected, though. As I'm saying that, I don't believe that I, like, am a part of that you know like oh, you are you are it that is something i still have yet to let i don't know if it ever will sink in because it i i don't even think i could it's crazy so um I yeah get it. yeah it's, yeah so it's cool it's a huge thing to be something that is bigger than any one person yeah it's 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 wild it's so crazy yeah and i can't believe we're doing um one in New Zealand, too. It's How great. much work goes into Whoa. the whole, like, all the all the choreo for the movie? Because you're just dancing for an hour. Mm -hmm. straight. Like, are you just doing that for, like, weeks and weeks and weeks until you start filming? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, I saw some of the, like, rehearsal footage for some of the dancing. Like, we're going to be dancing this movie. So I'm, like, I'm tired watching <laughs> watching it. But I'm so excited, like, more than anything. But I'm, like, woo, I need to get into shape. I'm out of shape. Um, But, uh, yeah, so usually we go... And we rehearse for a month. Wow. So, like, every week is, like, a number pretty much. Um, and kind of, like, flesh out uh, what we're going to do. Um, and then, yeah, and then there's, like, two months of filming. Like, two months and a half. And then some days are, like, you know, dance musical days. And some days are just, like, scenes. Um, but the dancing musical days are always 
really fun. On the third one, for the opening number, it was like Alien Invasion. It was all night shoots. So like that was really hard because your body's like, oh, I'm supposed to be sleeping now. And you're just like dancing <laughs> everywhere and you just feel like you're going to throw up the whole time. <laughs> um, but it brought us all closer yeah. um, as a cast, 1000%. So it was really cool. Wait, so you learn all the dances and then yeah. you go and shoot them all. But can you rehearse in between? Like, how do you remember the choreography? Like, I'm so. Yeah, you kind of like practice in your off days. The the um, choreographers are always really collaborative and really like if you need anything. Um, so like the days that we do the dances, like we're all helping each other and like, oh, what's this part? What's this part? And a lot of times it's in sections. Like it's very rare that you'll film like uh, it's oh, like here's the chorus choreography and then this choreography. It's not really like all in one. Yeah, I get it. There's like some numbers. Milo and I someday was like one pretty much. It was like split into half. So that one was really scary, but more i loved it because it was very like theater um and milo too because he's a huge theater kid as well so we were like so excited um so yeah but yeah remembering the choreography is definitely um a feat and to not get tired because you do like eight takes in a row um so you're just like you have to and then of course the one take where you're marking because you're tired because you've already done five they put in the movie (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> every time sometimes I watch myself like uh when we watch the premiere of zombies I feel like in alien invasion because it was like 5 a.m like I definitely like put the towel in um so when I watched that I'm like ooh, because I was just so <laughs> I just, yeah it was take five for sure um so yeah that's something like going into this movie I'm like I don't want to do that even if I'm gonna like pass out it's like it's but it's worth it when did you and milo find the chemistry or was it instant uh, well on during the auditions um we did a lot of chemistry tests together and then i think like before we did our final chemistry read they had us do a session with this acting coach and we <laughs> we had to stand like this close apart and just stare into each other's eyes for like a couple minutes and like do our scenes so that we were like super close and like we're got all the uncomfortability yeah. out um so i think that definitely helped <laughs> that we had to do that so then when, when we did our final chemistry read and there was other girls and guys like we were kind of more standoffish with them than we were with each other because <laughs> we had to stare into each other's eyes like an inch apart <laughs> so we were like very comfortable um and I think also we just got along really well. Like we had a lot in common with like being a theater kid and, um, you know, just being really excited and, uh, and yeah, so it just kind of worked. Um, yeah. And so I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. Zombies four on the way, but titles here for you right now. Link below, listen mm-hmm. to it. McDonald, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No, I hope your first appearance on our show is okay and you'll come back. A million percent. Yeah, oh. if you'll have me. Yeah, anytime. Fingers <laughs> okay, and toes. Cool. Yeah, the yeah. album's out. EP, whatever we're going to do. Yes, I would love to. I, I really would. This has been so cool. So thank you. We're always here. Cool. McDonald, everybody. Woo. Thank you. Thank you.